Hi guys, and in today's video, we're going to look at the four new world class from a beginner's perspective. Hi everyone, in today's video, we're going to be continuing the series of beginner's guides to the different classes of PSO. Uh, today's, as you might be able to guess, is looking at the four new world, which is one of the force classes in the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the class. Um, I'll tell you what its strengths and weaknesses are. Um, anything you might need to know about it if you're considering the class. Um, general mag builds you might want to go for, as well as some gear that you might want to consider looking for as well. Um, as usual, any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. I will try and answer whatever I can. So first of all, um, what exactly is Four New World? So again, I mentioned this in previous videos, but just to recap it again, um, PSO uses this quite strange naming system for its classes. Um, the way it basically works is the... The first part of the name will be capitalized and that is the class so in this case we've got four which is the abbreviation for force next up we've got new world so new world um essentially is the naming terminology that pso uses to describe a newman female so when you put it all together as four new world what it's saying is it's a female newman force so it's quite confusing for people who've never played the game before to get used to the naming system in pso um but once you've sort of figured out what each part of the name means it becomes a lot easier to remember which classes are which so that's what four new world means just female newman force so next what we'll do is we'll have a look at the um, four new world stats and we'll go through um what she excels in and what she doesn't so first thing you need to know about four new world so she is mainly designed as kind of a support force that can also um use offensive text quite well um she has the highest mental strength and highest tp in the game so she can use that um, the mental strength can obviously help boost her technique damage, but it can also help to, um, because of the increased TP pool, it also helps you to support a lot better as well, because you've got so much TP to support with. Um, in regards to her stat breakdown, if we open our menu here, now this character is at level 89, she does have a, a mind mag equipped, but just by looking at her stats, you can see there is a massive disparity in where the stats are focused. So with Four New World, um, your HP is very, very low. Um, you, you actually have, I believe you have the lowest HP of any class in the game. Um, so you are going to be taking a lot, a lot of your health in damage when you ever get hit. So Fawny World is a very, very squishy class. Um, you do want to be very, very careful about um, what areas you're going into. And you just want to be aware that you can't really take hits with this class. It is a very, very fragile class. Um, similarly, then if we move on to the TP, we've already mentioned this previously, but... Because for New World's mental strength, the TP is incredibly high. I mean, just by looking at my stats in the top left here, you can see, again, this is with a high mind mag. But whereas even if I remove my mag, I've now removed my mag. You can see I've got 486 health, but I have 1,392 mind. And that'll be boosted slightly by my mind units, but um, even if we remove those... We still have 1,204. So it's still a massive disparity between your HP and your TP. Your TP is always going to massively outpace your HP with Fawn You Well. So, um, just to touch on this while you can see it happening, um, you might notice now that my TP is actually restoring as well. So, because Fawn You Well is a Newman class, she has inherent um, TP regeneration when she stood still. Now, mine is accelerated slightly here, and the reason for that is because I'm using a Spirit Garment, which also gives TP regen. However, um, even without the Spirit Garment, she would still regen TP while standing still. The reality is, is that you're not going to really rely on that at all, because the, the rate of TP regen is far too slow to rely on. But it's nice, for example, if you're if you're standing at a boss, for example, with other players, and you're waiting for people to get ready, you can regen a little bit of TP while you're waiting, but don't rely on it generally. So if we go back to the stat menu, what you can see now is if we move into the attack power, bear in mind that this is a level 89 character. Um, we only have 231 attack power. So Fawn Will has the lowest attack power of any class in the game to the point where a lot of weapons that require attack power are just not usable by Fawn Will. And that's even weapons that are usable by other classes. So even some weapons that are quite useful for other classes you just might not be able to use um, just purely because you have, don't have enough attack power for it. So our attack power, the only thing we'll use that for is a couple of weapons that we might be able to use to restore our TP with. So an example of that would be the double saber, which I'll come on to that a little bit later on. 
Next, we move on to defense. So again, our defense is pretty low as well. Um, so combined with the low defense and low HP, you can see it doesn't take much to, to kill a fun you well. Um, there are ways we can get around that though. Next up, we have our mental strength. And you can see, even without my mag equipped, I've got 840 mental strength at this level. If I equip my mag, you can see it goes up to 1140. So, Fornuel has the highest mental strength of any class in the game. It doesn't necessarily make it the best offensive force in the game, um, for reasons I'll come on to, but, um, but it is still extremely capable. So, just to give you an idea of this, so at level 1, if we look at this um, stat comparison that I'm looking at here, so at level 1, uh, Fornuel will have 58 mental strength, now, the funny thing about that is, actually, at level 1, a Fun Noom actually has slightly higher at 60. Um, however, Fun Noom gets much better mental strength growth over the over levels, um, so it does end up higher overall. Um, other stats we can look at, so at level 1, again, we only have 27 HP, which is tied for the least in the game. We start with 87 TP. We only start with 13 attack, which is terrible. Um... Let's move on to our accuracy. So we start out with 61, which again, at level 1, is actually tied for the least in the game. Now, the interesting thing about that is, for our accuracy, we actually get reasonable accuracy later on. It's it's not brilliant by any means. Um, but it starts off at the joint lowest. We just get a slightly better accuracy growth than some of the other forces later on. Uh, and by some of the forces, I mean Phonium, because the, the only class that has worse accuracy is Phonium. So, if we move on to Evade, our Evade, as you can see, we've got 402, which for this level is actually not too bad. So, Fornuel has relatively high Evade, which does mean that you will you will block quite a lot of attacks. So, that does defend you a little bit against taking big damage. Um, again, you don't want to really be relying on this, because ideally you want to be as far from enemies as you can. And our look, as I've mentioned in previous videos, this doesn't change by level. This is only increased by gear and materials. With a Force... Well, particularly with a phone you well, you generally don't want to bother raising luck. Um, luck, if you don't know where it does, it just raises the chances of your critical hits. And with PSO, you can't get critical hits with techniques. They always do just a range of damage. They don't actually crit. So because of that, there's no benefit to raising luck with a phone you well. Because with a phone you well, you are not going to be using anything other than text to damage with, generally. So that's a basic rundown of the stats there. If we then move on to level 200, so at level 200, we um, this is without materials or anything, we go to 1,148 HP, which for level 200 is really, really bad. It, again, it's the lowest in the game. Our TP core, conversely, goes to 2,098, and again, this is without a mag or without any materials equipped, which is ludicrously high. Uh, attack power maxes at 4, uh, 483, and again, without materials and everything. So that is very, very low. Defense is 334, which is kind of middle of the road for a force. Our mental strength goes to 1200, which is huge. Our accuracy, 88, goes to 133, which is, at level 200, that is then slightly higher than Fornium. A little bit behind 4 Mar, which is at 138, and then 4 Mar leads at 144. And our evade goes to 735, which is the highest of the forces. If we then factor in maximum stats, so with max stats and uh, you know, max as many stats as we can, our health maxes at 1398, which is still very low, really, for a level 200 character. So even with with you know max stats, with max HP, materials, and everything, that, that is quite low. Um, our TP actually goes to 3173, which is just insane. Um, I would say that you'll never run out of TP with a phone you will, but that would be a lie. Um, even with that much TP, you will still burn out quite often. Uh, our attack power max is at 583, and this, this is one of the problems with phone you will. So there are certain weapons that have slightly higher equip requirements than that that would be really useful for it if she could use them. But because her attack power is so low and the cap is so low, she just doesn't get enough attack power to use them. Our defense goes to 390, which again is um, the lowest in the game. So you are, again, just to, just to remind you, you are a very, very squishy class with Phone Well. So you don't really want to be too near things, generally. 
Uh, our mental strength goes to 1,750, which is, again, the, not only the highest in the game, but it's actually significantly the highest in the game. The, the next nearest is actually Fornium, which is at 1,500, which is you know, 250 mental strength lower. So Fornuel has an almost infinite reserve of mental strength. Um, our ATA goes to 186. So this is where it gets really interesting. So it, it's, as I've mentioned, at level 1, Fornuel has the lowest ATA in the game, tied with Fornium. At level 200 with no materials, she goes to, to 133, which is kind of middle of the road for a force. But at um, level 200 with um, max stats, um, and the only way you'd be able to raise this would be through arm units and through decks on your mag because there's no accuracy materials. Uh, it actually goes to 186, um, which is significantly higher than all the other forces. Uh, well, it's a little bit higher than Fornium, but significantly higher than Formal or Formal. So it's got this strange growth on the um, accuracy way. You start out very, very low, but then you actually end up higher than all the other forces. Now, is there any benefit to that? To an extent, now, obviously AT8 is used for melee and guns primarily when, you, when you're attacking. Um... With Fornuel, because of the stat layout, you're not really going to be doing a lot of melee or shooting, but there are instances where you might want to use it. For example, um, I briefly mentioned the double saber earlier on. The double saber is a it's quite a low-end special weapon, and it has a TP steel special. You can, if you can get one of those with hit and put on a Fornuel, at a higher level, you actually can use it sort of effectively, um, but only for the special attack. Just to gain TP back. It's just a really good way of just siphoning TP back from enemies. Um, particularly if you're in multiplayer and someone else is, is sort of drawing the aggro, you can just sneak up on the enemy and just get a bit of TP back with the double server. So that is quite a useful use of Funnywell's accuracy because you're more likely to land those hits. Um, generally, though, you're not going to be using the melee weapons to actually attack with very often. The only exception is you may use weapons that have demons um, just to cut enemy HP. That's one possibility you might use for some enemies. Um, but generally you can bring down on your tech damage most of the time. Um, if we go back to the stats briefly, um, so we've covered accuracy, and the last one is evade. So our evade goes to, at max stats, it's 883, which again is actually a lot higher than um, any of the forces. 883 is actually higher than um, some clashes you wouldn't even expect. So 883 actually outclasses Hucaseal, which is insane. I will stress though that is only with maximum stats, so that is if you're heavily investing into evade materials, um, which you probably don't want to do. Um, at level 200 base stats, you can see it does outclass um, for your world for evade. So that's a rundown of the base stats. So next, there's a couple of things that we need to cover about for your world because forces tend to have boosts in certain areas that sort of dictate how they play best. So with for your world. So there are several boosts that Fornu World gets. So the first one is um, you have that TP um, regen that I mentioned briefly earlier. Next thing is there are several techniques that you actually have boosts to. So by boosts, I mean there is a percentage modifier added to some techniques that will just affect how much damage they do or affect the range of them or the effectiveness. With Fornu World, those boosts are for the what are called the simple techs. So if I go into my technique menu, and I will cover what text for New World gets in a moment, but just know that for the time being, the simple texts, which are Foy, Zonda, and Barter, these all get a boost. And I'll come back to what the boost is in a moment for you. First of all, I think we should just go through the text and just let you know what for New World has access to. The short answer is everything. So because she's a force, she gets access to every tech in the game. So we have access to Foy, Zonda, and Barter up to level 30. We have Giz uh, Gifoy, Gizonde, and Gibata up to 30. We have Rafoy, Razonde, and Rabata up to 30. We also get access to Grants and Megid up to 30. We get Rest up to 30. We get Anti up to 7. This character only has 6, unfortunately, at the minute, but um, yeah, we get Anti up to level 7. We get access to Reverser. This is a technique that only forces get access to, and it's a tech that Revive, uh, revives another player. So it just acts like a moon atomizer. Um, the advantage of it is it means that you can save inventory slots by not having to carry moon atomizers with you. It also means if you run out, uh, run out of moon atomizers, you can still revive people. The downside is it does have a long, long casting animation. 
I don't know if I can actually cast it when there's no one here, but... Um... So you can see, it's quite a long cast animation for it. You are kind of locked into that, so when I cast it, I can't move during this. But that is quite dangerous to use sometimes, just because of how long the casting animation is, so just be aware of that. Sometimes it will be more beneficial to just use a Moon Atomizer instead. That's Reverser. And then in our support text, we have access to Shifter, Diband, Jelen, Zala, all at level 30. And we have Ryuka as well to make a Telepipe. Now, going back to those boosts that I mentioned. So, Phony World gets boosts in what are called the Simple Attacks. So, it gets a boost to Foy, Zonda, and Barda. And it's a 30% 30% damage boost on these techniques, which is pretty impressive. And that will stack with other boosts from we other weapons that boost it as well. So I'll come on to weapons that are recommended later on, but just know that the Phony World sort of innate boost does stack with the weapon boost as well. That's the first boost that Phony World gets. So a 30% boost in damage to these three techs here. The next one it gets is a support one. So go to our, our to healing techs. So Phony World gets a 100% range increase to both Resta and Anti. So it essentially doubles the range of your Resta and Anti. Don't know if I'll be able to tell when I cast this, but it's kind of hard to tell um, here, but... but the Resta and Anti both will have a double range so you can heal people and or take statuses off them from further away. So that makes Phony World a very, very capable support class. And the last thing is another one which is in the hard techniques, Phony World also gets a, a difference to its Megid. So Megid, if you don't know what it is, Megid essentially is a skill only forces can use. If I use a dark projectile, and when it hits an enemy, it will either do nothing or it will kill them. And there's no in between. It doesn't do damage. It just it either does nothing or it instant kills. Now with Megid, normally what happens with it for other classes, for other forces, is the Mega Projectile will hit one enemy, and then it'll fizzle out. It'll, it'll basically hit them, it'll either do nothing or kill them, and then the projectile will fizzle out. With For New World, you actually have the ability to pierce with Megid. So I might be able to show this, actually. Um, I probably won't be able to kill things with it, because I think the Dark Resist on some of these enemies here is quite high, but... It's just starting to show you it, basically. So if I line these enemies up and then do Megid, you can see it pierced through both of them. Now there it did nothing, and again, this is because these guys have relatively good dark resist. So there, we got an instant kill there. You can see it is very sort of hit and miss whether it whether it'll work. So um, with that tech, you just want to be looking at the enemy's dark resists um, when you're hunting different areas and just seeing if it is actually viable to use it. The main areas is some parts of episode 2 and some parts of episode 4 are really good for using Megid. Episode 1, not so much. Um, but that's the main difference. So with, with Phone New World, you do have that pace effect on your Megid, so you can potentially kill multiple things in one Megid, which is quite useful in some areas. So that that's the techs that get boosted with this class. So... With that said, what are the advantages of Phony World and what's its role in a party? So, as I've shown, um, Phony World is a very, very capable character in terms of support because it has access to those level 30 techs and because it has that double range on Rester and Anti, that makes it a very, very capable class for keeping your party alive. So, if you want to, to support your party and you want to be the one who's keeping everyone alive and keeping them all going, Phony World could be the class for you. However, that isn't the only thing that Phony World is good at. Um, it is still a force. It does still have incredibly high mental strength, so it is perfectly fine to use as a like an offensive force as well. There are forces that are better at it. Um, so Phonium, for example, gets boosts on some of the, the techs that are used for groups, um, whereas Phony World's attack boosts are mainly used for single target. So Phony World excels a lot on bosses, simply because the simple techs quite often get used on bosses. There are some you'll use other techs on, but quite often you will use simple techs. Um, because of that boost that you've got, you will do a lot of damage to them with a Phony World. Um, so if you want to play a class that is amazing support, but also is very capable as a 
solo class and very capable against bosses. Flown you well could be the class for you. Um, so, for example, when we've got enemies like here where they're spaced out quite well, we can just target them and take them out individually. And you can see our damage is incredibly high for our level, really. You know, most classes wouldn't be dealing this much damage at this level, really. So you can see it is it is very, very capable. Um, the downsides... We'll come on to the downsides of having this much power at this level. But what you need to know, first of all, is... That if you are playing for New World, just be aware that you're... If you're in a party, it's almost expected, really, that your main role will be to support people. Um, there's a bit of a joke that's run in the PSO community for years, which is... Um, Depending on which side you sit on, it's either forces not nurses or nurses not forces. Um, if you're playing multiplayer, you're, you're kind of expected to keep people alive if you're a force, regardless what kind of force you are. So just be aware of that. But also be aware that you can use these solo no problem at all, and they are very, very good at it. So in this instance, for example, um, a Fornium would probably do better here because they have boosts to the text that you'd want to use here. But we still do okay. Now, those are the main advantages to Fornium World. The disadvantages. So, first of all, the, the big one is, as I've mentioned before, how fragile the class is. Uh, what I'll do actually is I will deliberately take a hit so I have a high level D band on here to boost my defense. But what I'll do is I'll deliberately take a hit from this guy. Just so you can see. So you can see I lost like a good 20% of my health there. And that's with a high level D band. Um, without that D band we'd be taking a ton more damage. And that wasn't a critical hit either. So just be aware that you are going to really take damage if you get hit with a phone you will. Um, so they are very very fragile class. The next problem with them is... It's in regards to their technique usage, so although you have a massive pool of TP, what you'll find is quite often with a phone you will, when you start finding high level techniques, you'll probably just use them because you think, yeah, I want to use them to do more damage. Sometimes that can be a bad thing because if you use them, they also cost more TP and what you'll find is you will burn out really, really fast. But you can see here, just from doing these few rooms, I've used about like probably nearly 30% of my TP just from a few rooms. And if you watch my TP gauge here when I start casting, you'll see how fast it goes down. Yes, we do kill stuff very quickly, but... I mean, see they were already under 1,000 TP. When you will can also struggle a little bit when you start getting groups of enemies. Just because it doesn't have the boosts in those AoE techs, it focuses on single target boosts. But you can see, just looking at the TP gauge, you can see how much I've used just from this room. So there, we're already down to a like, critical TP, so that's only from about three or four rooms of forest. But because of that, you do need to use a lot of fluids. Now, the downside is, in PSO, for some reason, fluids don't really scale that well per difficulty. Now, what I mean by that is, so for each difficulty you go through in PSO, your mate items, so monomates, diamates, and your fluids, your monofluids and difluids, they will heal by a certain amount. Um, it's not a percentage of your gauge, it's an actual fixed amount they heal by. But that doesn't really scale up too well in later difficulties. For mates, it's not too bad. But for example, if I use a difluid, now you can see I'm, I'm on just over 400 TP. If I use a difluid, It barely makes a dent in my TP, and I have to actually use like three or four dive fluids to heal back up to full. And that's after three or four rooms. So what you'll find is that you'll you either need to just constantly go back to Pioneer to stock up on dive fluids, or you'll start using tri fluids. The downside with using tri fluids is although they do instantly fill your TP, they also cost like three thousand six hundred Mazetta each, um, which is significantly more than dive fluids. I think they cost five hundred. Um, so there is a huge Mazetta cost to running a force, which does make them quite difficult to recommend for a brand new player to the game. 
just because you might actually struggle for money to fund them. And which sounds ludicrous, but you essentially, a lot of the money that you make from quests with a force, you'll probably just spend on, on fluids. So in C again, we've already used like 15, 20% of our TP. So the, the drain rate is very, very fast. And although we do have that native TP regeneration, it, it does nothing in comparison to how much we're using. I mean, you see each cast we're using probably about 30 TP a cast roughly. And we're getting like one back every half second or so. It just doesn't begin to add up. That's one thing you do need to be aware of. And this isn't just a full new world problem. This is for any force really. Um, some of the other forces can get around it a little bit by being a hybrid between melee and force. So for four mar and four mile, they can kind of they can effectively use melee as well, so they can get around this a little bit. But particularly for the Newman forces, um, for for Newm and for New World, you are going to find that you are just going to spend a lot on fluids, and that is another reason for that double saber that I mentioned earlier, just to try and minimise the fluid use that you get. So. With that in mind, is there any gear that I'd recommend for this class? The so first thing you need is your mag. So with a phone you will, typically the easy one to go for is this kind of build, which is five defense, no power, 45 dex, no mind, uh, sorry, 150 mind. You definitely won't mind. <laughs> um, reason for this is five defense is just on the mag to begin with. You can't do anything about that. You don't really need power on a phone you will because you are never going to be using melee to actually do damage. The dex is just there um, mainly for two reasons. One is so you can get some special evolutions just so you've got the stat layout to be able to get those special evolutions like Nidra or Sato. The other reason is because if you are using weapons like the double saber, having that bit of extra dex will just help you hit with the special attack a little bit more reliably. Next up, the, the mind. Generally, you just want as much mind as possible. Now, some people will run a max mind mag, which will be like 185 or so mind. That is, it will definitely work really well on a phone you will, if you are just going pure, you know, pure offense and you're not really bothered about using um, any melee weapons to get TP back. The downside of a 180 odd mind mag, though, is they're a lot harder to raise. It's just a lot more work because you have to constantly balance the different bars. So with the 185 mind mag, you have to constantly do it so that every time another stat gets near leveling, you then have to feed it materials to lower that stat before you can level mind again. And it just makes the whole process of leveling the mag a lot more complex and a lot more um, laborious. So generally, I would say 150 mind mag is probably absolutely fine. Just bear in mind uh, the stat layout for if you are going for a special mag though. In regards to Photon Blast, so on this one, I've got the typical three that you normally have, which is Estela, Pillar and Maliula. Um, you can get some use out of ones like Layla for the support ones because I believe they can restore your TP. Um, so they can be useful sometimes, but generally, as long as you've got Estela for some damage and you've got um, Pillar for some other damage if someone's already got Estela. Um, Maliula, you're typically not going to use Maliula when you're solo. And the reason for that is because Maliula, when you're solo, gives you a level 21 shifter and deband. Like you already have up to level 30 native. So unless your shifter and band discs are lower than level 21, which they probably shouldn't be a high level, um, then you're probably not going to use Mallor and Eula as a solo phone you will. The reason you would take it is for if you're playing multiplayer and you are doing a photon blast chain, there might be other people in the party who don't have Mallor and Eula on the mag. And if that's the case, you can be the one that uses Mallor and Eula just so everyone gets that big shifter and band buff. But next up, we're going to move on to other gear. So... For armor, Spirit Garment is a really solid one for earlier in the game. Reason is, it's only level 71 to equip it. It's really, really easy to find. Um, I know from Red Rear, I think it drops from like a, a Gibbles in Very Hard Tower um, or Mountain. And it's about a 1 in 40 something drop. So just run Phantasmal World for two floor runs, or actually, not even one floor run to be fine for that. Um, just run that a few times. You, you'll probably get it in a few runs. This is good for several reasons. One, it's only level 71 requirement, so it's easy to equip early on. Two, it has native inbuilt TP regeneration, which will obviously stack with your regen. Again, that's not a massive deal. It's just a nice little bonus that you can, that, that you've got when you stand in still. So you can see my TP is just natively increasing at the moment while I'm stood still. Um, 
The other benefit of Spirit Garment, though, is there are a lot of different armors that you can transform it into. So you can transform it into things like Aura Field um, by using a Magic Rock Mula on it. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend that for a full New World because Aura Field actually drains your TP. It does give you really, really high defense, but it does drain your TP, so... It's up to you if you want to use one. You've got so much TP that it might not be an issue, but just be aware of that. You can also turn it into armors like Brightness Circle. You can turn it into Love Heart. There's several different armors that you can transform it into. Some of which are, are really nice on a force. So just be aware of that. Um, so that is definitely one I'd definitely hunt. But units, obviously anything that increases your mental strength is always useful. So things like God Mind, that increase it by 40. Heavenly Mind increases it by 45. Any of these are really useful. Um, I have a key of paralysis in here, and this is just because getting paralyzed as a force is really, really annoying. Um, there are much better units to put in here, though. So there are units like, I believe it's called V801. This is a blue burst exclusive item. Um, so V801 gives you a very, very small mental strength increase, but also actually it actually speeds up your casting animations a little bit, which is fantastic. Because one of the big problems with force is that your casting animations can be a bit slow sometimes. So V801 helps with that. There's also um, units like the Slash Technique units, so um, Heavenly Technique, God Technique. Um, what they do is they actually increase the level of your techniques. So God Technique, for example, what it does is, say, for example, if you had a level 27 technique, if you have a high-end technique unit like God Technique or something, it'll increase that level to say 28, 29 or 30. So it's a good way of boosting your techniques up to those levels if you can't find the disc. That's one that you could use as well. Um, next up, we have these shields called mergers. Now these are shields that you make. And the way you make them is you need to find a, a barrier first of all. So for this one, you need to find a, a barrier called a red barrier. Once you find a red barrier, you then need to find what's called an amplifier. So for me, I use the amplifier of Rafoi. And you can band together and it makes what's called a Rafoi merge. And what this does is it boosts my Rafoi damage. And there are merges for all different techs. So you can get, you know, for example, Gizonde merges, Rabata merges. Um, there are also ones such as Red Merge or Blue Merge. And what they do is they boost um, all of the techs of a specific element. It might be a slightly smaller boost, but... Um, for example, a red merge will boost all of your fire attacks. So they're well worth going for, um, just because having that extra boost on some techs is a fantastic way of improving your overall damage. Um, it can be a way of covering weaknesses on your class as well. So with Four New World, taking something like a Rafoi merge, for example, will help to bring up that damage on the Rafoi that you don't get boosted normally. Or you can go the other route and just boost your simple techs even further. So on the subject of boosting techs, there are a lot of weapons that actually boost your techniques as well. So, first of all, I, I believe, I may be wrong on this, but I believe that this weapon I'm using actually boosts for you as well. This is the Hildebear's Cairn. This is a really, really easy weapon to get early on. It usually drops from a very hard Hildebear. It'll drop as a body part called Hildebear's Head, and then you just convert it using the body part conversion system. And you'll be able to make this weapon. This is a really, really um, decent weapon for early on. It only needs um, 400 mental strength to use, so it's really easy for a force to use. And what it does is it boosts for you. I think it says in the description, I think. Yeah, it actually says in the description that it boosts for you. It gives you a boost on for you. I can't remember the percentage overall now. I'll, what I'll do is I'll overlay how much it boosts for you by now. So you can see. The other advantage of this weapon as well is that its special attack actually casts for you as well. Now, there is a long wind-up to it, and it is only a low-level for you, so it's not going to do fantastic damage. But it is a really, really good way of just conserving a little bit of TP if you're fighting something that's weak to fire. That's one weapon I'd recommend. Other weapons for later on, um, there is a cane called a Summit Moon. Um, so Summit Moon, the way you make it is you get any normal cane weapon, so it's any cane that isn't rare, and grind it to its maximum. And then you use a magic rock moolah on it while you're while, it, while it's equipped. And it'll turn into a summit moon. Now there is some requirements to that, so you need to be a certain level and a certain mental strength to be able to do it. Um just look on things like FNA's wiki if you want to see the requirements for it. Um what Summit Moon does is that boosts all of your simple techs again, and I believe that's by 
it's either 20 or 30 percent again i'll overlay how much it's by so that's a fantastic dps increase for vorny well because it's boosting the text that you're already boosted on so definitely consider the summit moon also there are some very very easy weapons to get that are really really good on fun well as well so there are three different weapons there's one called the club of laconium there's the mace of adamant and the club of zoom eater on and if you're thinking i've got loads of these in my stash you probably have because they are really really easy to find they start dropping in like hard mode into very hard and they're a very very common drop generally um, what they do is they actually give you a massive boost to a single tech. So the Club of Laconium, for example, I believe that gives you, it's either a 30 or a 40% boost to Foy. And then Mace of Adamant is the same for Barter and Club of Zumuran is the same for Zonda. They actually give you a massive damage increase if you use those and they are fantastic to use um, early on. And to us, even into the later game, they, they function perfectly fine because they give you such a big boost. But just be aware that they only boost one specific tech. Um, so generally, it might be worth going with the Summit Moon later, just so you've got a, a nice spread of boosts. So they're definitely worth considering. Um, there is obviously like, end game equipment like Sidecore Wand and things like that as well, but realistically, those kind of things are they're things you're going to spend a long time hunting. So I can't really recommend them as gear to use just because you may never find them. If you can get one, brilliant, but don't sort of rely on getting them. Um, so they're probably the main things I'd recommend for gear for sort of getting through very hard into ultimate. Once you're into ultimate, it opens up a lot more and you can go and hunt a lot, um, a lot of other sp for specific gear. So the last thing I want to cover is just some areas where Fornuel is a bit outclassed. So I've mentioned that Fornuel is a fantastic support. However, although it gets the double range boost to rest and anti it doesn't get a double boost to um shifter deband or gel or Zalua. there are weapons that will boost that so for example the the striker of chow um that will boost the, that'll double the range of a shifter and deband and i believe there is a weapon that boosts your gel and Zalua range as well i just can't which one it is now um so you can get around it by using certain gear but just be aware that although you are fantastic at rest and anti because of the range is huge and also because your mental strength's massive as well, you'll heal by a lot more. Um, just be aware that that range doesn't extend to your buffs. Um, you'll still have really, really good buffs because they're level 30. They just won't have the range of, say, a 4 mile. So the next area that I found you are slightly outclassed is, as I sort of briefly touched on earlier, is when you're dealing with large mobs. So because Fornuel's boosts to its offensive techs are in simple techs, it's good at taking on single targets. For large groups it can struggle slightly particularly in multiplayer where enemies have higher elemental resistances um just because you just don't have the boost in those areas or those kind of areas if you are wanting to bring any kind of force you're probably looking to take on um either a four ma which gets boost to the um the uh, gizon digabata gifoi or particularly a four neum so four neums are fantastic for taking out groups because they have a huge boost to their um, rafoi razonda and rabata so you probably want to edge towards a full Neum if you want to take out large groups of enemies. Um, however, full Neum isn't as good as support at full New World. So it's like a fine line between the two, which one you want to go with. If you want to go with a more offensive focused force with a side of support, then you might want to go with a full Neum. If you want to go with a support focused force that can also be offensive, um, then you can use a full New World. And if you want um, a force that can use a mix of melee and techs, and support then the human forces are probably more suited for you so just bear that in mind if you are considering a phone you will so i think i'll probably end this one there um i hope that's been relatively useful for anyone considering a phone you will um it is a really really fun class to play honestly and it does excel in solo it's also extremely good at support as i've mentioned earlier um it is quite difficult to use if you're if you're new to the game just because of the the expense of going through the fluids and also just because of how squishy it is early on. Um, if you're not used to how enemies act and things like that, um, you might want to maybe try another class first before you try Fornuel, well, just so you get a bit more f familiar with how the enemies act, just so you can learn where to position yourself, just so you're out of harm's way. Yeah, a lot of it is just knowing about how the enemies act and sort of knowing how to position your character. Um, one thing I've mentioned in my Beginner's Guide to PSO is that quite often you'll want to use what's called doorway sniping. And with Fornuel, particularly at lower level, it can be quite useful to do. So what that would be is you would 
basically just go into a room, snipe the enemies, and then if any of them do get near you, just run out the room. Um, it's just not worth trying to take the hit sometimes with this class just because of how fragile it is. So just sort of keep that in mind as you're going through the areas. Once you're more familiar with how enemies act, then you can probably play the class a lot more effectively and position yourself better. So, hope that's been useful. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking or subscribing to the channel. Um, I'm also on Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, at Section Skylight, and I do tend to update on there whenever I'm uploading a new video or whenever I'm going live. Um, I do stream live on YouTube, usually on Sundays, and we typically play PSO or PSO2 NGS, so if you're interested in either of those, please consider dropping by on Sundays as well. Um, as usual, any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll answer what I can. But for the meantime, I'll see you guys in the next video.